Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage where we watch every single theatrically released movie in animated movie. animated movie in chronological order. We would be here forever otherwise. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're still going to be here forever. Yes. And uh, <laughs> we're not actually going in order today because last episode we said we were going to be watching A Christmas Carol from 1969, but it turns out that was a TV movie and we're not watching TV movies, so we skipped the, muse the Christmas movie. Huzzah! <laughs> Hooray! We really need to do a more thorough job <laughs> checking to see if something is a TV movie or not. It, it's going to get more and more difficult as we go forward. Mm -hmm. But we'll, yeah. Well, it, no, it should become more and more clear as we go forward. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just here in the beginning era. It's difficult to do. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going back in time again because uh, we had a patron that, was, that found multiple movies for us from this past decade that we weren't able to find ourselves. So yep. thank you to Daniel Ray for helping us find all of these. Thank you so much. We looked for these and did not find them. I don't know if they've just been put on the internet since since we last looked or... Because for anyone who's curious, the way that we look for movies is I make the list for the decade. At the start of the decade, I make the list of the movies. And I usually just pull them straight from what Wikipedia says came out. Mm -hmm. And then, together, just the two of us, Sean and I, look at all those movies. We try and see if it was actually theatrically released, because sometimes Wikipedia's list is not completely reliable. Mm -hmm. And then, then... we do a brief scouring of the internet, because we can't spend 15 hours trying to find each of these movies. Right. So we do a brief scouring where we look at all the usual suspects of YouTube and like Amazon and Daily Motion, like things like that, mm -hmm. and some other sites in there as well. But if we don't find it in in any of those locations, we chalk it up to lost and we move on. Yeah. But hey, if you feel like you really want us to talk about a specific movie, you can look at the list and then you can go spend ten hours and find it. And if you do find it. Don't give us movies that are, like, you know, from the 80s. Or the yeah, 90s. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, look look at stuff that's, like, coming up. Yeah. That's on our list and see what we've marked it. Yeah. The list is down in the description. If we've marked it that we haven't found it, then feel free to tell us about those movies on that list. Yeah. But don't tell us about movies from the 80s or 90s because we're not there yet. No. We're only just getting ready to start the 70s. Yeah. So you can start looking at 70s movies and if you find them, let us know. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we're here in 1967 and we're talking about our first ever South Korean film. Yeah. We're talking about a story of Hong Gildong and I am absolutely 100% sure I said that incorrectly. I think that's about accurate, though. It Hong is. Gildong. That is the English way to say it, but I know in the movie they were definitely saying something different. Okay. But I don't know what the specific pronunciation for South Korea, like Korean, is. I. That being said, the way they were saying in the movie could also be incorrect because what we actually listened to. No, no, was... no, 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 no. You are incorrect. Hmm. At the beginning of this movie, there was a note saying. Oh, you're right. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's a, begin a note at this that the original movie was lost. Yes. It, well, okay. The original video of the movie was lost. By the Only way, we found this one on YouTube, um, and it's listed as being part of, like, South Korean uh, film archive. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's free to look at, you know, and obviously they're just trying to preserve the history that, you know, this mm -hmm. film existed. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Anyways, it said that the original South Korean version of the movie was lost. They only have the audio left. Turns out, before it was lost, it was actually exported to Japan, and a Japanese version of the movie was made. So, they were able to take the Japanese film and put the Japanese audio, or the South Korean audio back to it. So while the credits at the beginning ha lists all of the Japanese actors and stuff, the movie itself is still audio-wise in South Korean. Korean. Yeah. 
I don't know if there's a difference between. I'm no, pretty sure, no, it's just it's Korean. Just Korean. Yeah. It's like I'm pretty sure both North and South Korea speak the same language. Yeah. So it's all in Korean. So you're incorrect. Yeah. I was thinking <laughs> that it was the the Japanese, but yeah, you're right. Nope. So, but that that's really interesting and cool. Mm-hmm. That the country was able to find a lost movie essentially and put yeah. it back together. Either way, is the story of Hong Gildong. All right, so Hong Gildong is the son of a magistrate? Magistrate, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a governor. Some, some sort of government official. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he is uh, not a true-born son. He he's, is, he's a bastard. He's a bastard because his father slept with his handmaiden. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, he is still treated fairly nicely. He's allowed to be a part of the family and stuff, and his mother is... I don't even think she's a handmaiden anymore. She just kind of... Lives there. Lives there and is also taken care of, which is all very nice. I don't know what the general customs of Japan or South Korea are in this standings. Well, that might also be a translation for us, mm -hmm. like in English, because... From what I saw in the original folk story that this is based off of, okay, um, it's just like a concubine. Okay. So. I mean, that's very. Seems. Yeah. Legit. It's like I don't know how South Korea works, and I especially don't know how South Korea worked when this was, what time period this is from, which is like the Middle Ages or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's like I don't know. I don't know how uh, having kids out of wedlock. Works, works. <laughs> in are 15th you century uh, Korea. It's like, are you allowed to have just concubines on the side and kids with whoever you want if you're powerful? Is that frowned upon? I don't know. But either way, he seems to be taken care of pretty well. Uh, the way the movie um, frames it, it sounds like like Jung or. Hong, Hong Gildong is fairly fortunate that he has a father that still like claims him and looks after him. Yeah. Even though he's, he's not one of his own legitimate sons. Yeah, it's like he obviously doesn't seem to have any uh, way that he's going to get any of like his dad's land or anything. Right, like, like that. he's not going to inherit. He's not going to inherit anything, but he is still considered, considered part, part of, of the, the family, family and will be able to live with them forever right. because. Families live together. It's just a thing you do. Mm -hmm. Anyway, though, some Either evil way. guy, some evil fortune teller turns up. And says disaster will befall his family, and it's all because of Hong Gildong. So you got to get rid of him. you got to disown him and get him out of the house. Mm -hmm. um, turns out uh, Hong Gildong's father's actual wife sent this guy. Yeah. And then... So Hong Gildong is like, fine, I'll leave in the morning and I'll be really sad oh, about it. There's this heartbreaking scene between the father and son where, like, the father won't look at him. And he's like, you're not allowed to call me father anymore. And uh, Hong Gildong is like, yes, father. I mean, sir. And I'm like, oh. Well, that's sad. It's like, you may not be able to claim me anymore, but I will uphold the family. Yeah, I still have the blood of our family in and me like and... the 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 good-hearted nature of our family because our family is so great and awesome and amazing and good uh -huh. and stuff. <laughs> and I will uphold that even if you disown me. Yeah. So it's like, all right. So we're showing that our main character is like god-tier levels of good. Yeah, yeah. All right. The super honorable um, disown son. Mm -hmm. I get it. All right. I see what yeah. kind of character we're going to deal with here. Yeah. Either way. Turn, I like it. Yeah. The wife tells the fortune teller then in the middle of the night to go and murder Hong Gildong. Even though she already yeah. planned for him to get excommunicated from the family, why she doesn't just wait a day for him to get kicked out of the house and then kill him? Uh -huh. No, he's still in the house. Either way, uh, Hong Gildong doesn't die and fights off the guy and finds out this is the thing. He's like, obviously I don't feel trusted here and I'll leave. And he's like, you were leaving anyways. <laughs> This is kind of an unnecessary side plot. You you poorly planned this out, lady. <laughs> You're very petty. <laughs> um, so either way, Hong Gildong is now off on his own. Mm -hmm. And 
first thing he does is he stops a bandit who is uh, robbing people at a bridge with an axe. Yeah. Turns out it's a little kid, and his name is, again, I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, mm -hmm. but it's Chattel Bowie. Yeah. Or however it's some, supposed to be pronounced. Some variation of that. That's what it looks like written down. Yeah. And so this little kid, apparently an evil magistrate in his area, whipped his dad to death when his dad couldn't afford to pay something. Mm -hmm. And Hong Gildong's like, well, let's go beat the crap out of that guy then. Yeah, that's not how government should work. People in power should be kind to the people below them. And take care of them and stuff. Yeah. All right, I see what this message is of the movie. Well, I mean... We're doing Robin Hood. We're, okay. It's Robin Hood. <laughs> so, Channel Bowie is his little John. Yeah. Quite literally a little John. <laughs> yeah. He just follows him everywhere and I helps think it should out. be said now, though, mm -hmm. that, like, we are very well aware that in pretty much all cultures there is a Robin Hood... Style. ...story. Yeah, there's Like, a Japan mm -hmm. has their own version of it. Australia has their own version of a Robin Hood, I know. Mm -hmm. You know. But that guy was real. Yeah. The Australian guy was real. I didn't know that. Yes. He, uh... He was like a bandit outlaw guy that, uh, he took a plow and made literal armor for himself out of it. Like, really? And this is, like, late enough that people had guns. Hmm. So he, like, made a metal helmet and breastplate for himself out of a plow. And then he eventually got captured and put sent to jail and stuff. Australia's awesome enough, I... A thousand percent believe that. I'll need to look into all of this <laughs> now because now I'm curious. But I mean, apparently this is, you know, I mean, a this lot could be of, real. Who a knows? lot of Robin Hood stories claim to be based off of some real person that existed at some point. Mm -hmm. And this is the same kind yeah. of deal. It's just, I know that the, the Australian guy is like the most recent. And like... <laughs> <laughs> like, like he only happened. This only happened like a hundred to maybe a hundred and fifty years ago. Wow. Type of thing. Awesome. Uh huh. <laughs> Either way. Chaotic good for the win. <laughs> the thing is, I don't know if he was chaotic good. He might have just been <laughs> a little crazy. Chaotic selfish. Chaotic but people, neutral? but people liked him. <laughs> I mean, I like him already. <laughs> Anyways. Hong Gildong goes to this evil magistrate's place and he's about to whip another guy to death. Mm -hmm. um, and Chattel Bowie jumps in and is like, no! Or not Chattel Bowie, uh, Hong Gildong jumps in and is like, no! How dare you! And then he proceeds to beat up a literal army of men with a bamboo stick. He just stands there and swings back and forth and they just go <laughs> flying. All right, now I think is a good time to mention that the animation for this film... Isn't good? It's a little rough. <laughs> you know, I think, like, so long as they're doing just, like, talking scenes and stuff, it looks fine. And their staging is actually pretty good. But the actual animation itself... Some of the posing's a little weird. Yeah, it's like, they don't have great dynamic posing. And any action scenes, you really get the impression that, like, this is animator's first project. Yeah, they're not... They don't know... They don't know the fundamentals of animation that have been passed down through America and various other countries. Because yeah. I'm assuming South Korea at this point is still pretty new at the whole animation industry. Now, that being said, we have had a couple of different, like, South Korean films, especially upcoming, because we've mm -hmm. been researching stuff for the 70s. And, man, if anybody can find us South Korean films, let us know, because we have not been able to find any of these. It's like, we got, like, a whole bunch on our list that we just had to pass up because we could not find them. Yeah. It's like, I know a lot of them are stop-motion films, but even still, I want to see what they got. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, a new country and their movies, and uh, we can't find any of it. Yeah. All right. And, I mean, there's been a lot of other movies from other countries we haven't found. Like, there's a few in the Middle East that just don't exist apparently mm -hmm. and that's sad but i'd love to see all of these movies but most of them are lost to time and that sucks mm -hmm. or at the very least are so obscure that we don't know where to look for them mm -hmm. uh either way uh he goes to the evil magistrate and beats everybody up 
uh, saves the guy that was about to be whipped to death, and they escape. Mm-hmm. Uh, as they escape, the the random guy who was about to be whipped to death, his daughter's like, thank you for saving my father. I am a very obvious, beautiful love girl, interest. love interest character, yeah. and that's my only character. Oh, yeah. She doesn't show up for much of the movie, so that's fine, I guess. But mm-hmm. uh, She does play an important role at the end. She, like, saves the day. I forget how she does it, but she, like, rides in, and she informs them that, like, the thing is happening, and so they're all able to, like, get to the thing before the bad thing happens, and then at the end of the movie, they even bring her forward, and they're like, without you, we wouldn't have been able to do the thing. And it's like, wow, she is a hero, too. You know, I don't remember any of this. That happened, and I was... I was impressed. Okay. I mean, I remember the first part, but I forgot the second part where they congratulated her specifically. Mm-hmm. In which case, awesome. Yeah. I can't believe I forgot this. Yeah. That was pretty cool. To be honest, I was getting a little sleepy at the end of this movie. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. It's a pretty standard film, but I do want to say that this is actually paced pretty well. Mm-hmm. We've seen a lot of movies with stories like this that have not had as good of pacing as this has. Like, usually there's some tangent of, like, stuff that just happens for a few minutes. But this movie doesn't have that. Like, it's pretty on point. Everything that happens happens for a reason. There's not just Mm -hmm. random bad comedy or anything like that thrown in there just to waste time. Yeah, it has a story to tell. It knows where to put all its players and all its pieces, and it tells that story. This is one of the, like, rare occasions where the storytelling and the, the, like, backgrounds and the framing and everything is miles better than the animation. Like, the animation is the only big lacking piece in this whole movie, really. Mm-hmm. Obviously, and you could do better. it's pretty with... lacking. Like, yeah. like, this is pretty rough animation. Like, obviously, this movie could do better with, like, more, better sound design and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, like, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, like, poo-poo them that right. much. I mean, it feels like... Because this is the first South Korean film, Mm -hmm. I I can't help but kind of compare it to, like, Snow White. Yeah. And, like, it kind of had that same feeling to me. Um, Very much in the way the story was told and how much you're supposed to just relate and root for the main character. And they're kind of, like, a victim of circumstance, but they're making the best of it and stuff. I just, I had a very Snow White experience watching this film. (laughs) And... Like, yeah, the animation's way more rough than Snow White, but I I could still tell that, like, there was a whole lot of thought and care putting in put into making sure that the story worked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very true. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Yeah. Back to plot. Yeah. Um, so they go back to the house of this guy that was getting whipped to death, and his daughter's there, and th- about this point, uh, Hong Gildong decides, I need to learn how to use a sword, because mm-hmm. I haven't done that yet. So I'm going to go find this random master guy, and they go off on an adventure, and they find him, and the master guy's like, oh, you're looking for me, well, come find me, and he flies off on a cloud. Anyway, Hong Gildong and uh, Chattel Bowie eventually find this guy, but they have to go through, like, multiple trials of... This guy turning random objects into evil monsters or something and have to fight it off. There's like a giant bat made out of leaves and spooky scary skeletons made out of (laughs) logs and then a dragon that was literally just a cloud. Yeah. But either way, they get to the top and he's like, cool, you did it. Now wax my floor for a while. Channel Bowie's like, this is bullshit and leaves. (laughs) Yeah. Uh... And then the master's like, cool, I knew you would stay because you knew that determination and patience or something, yada yada. Learn by magic! Yeah. And he teaches him how to use a sword, but also magic and flying clouds and, you know, the the usual at this point. Yeah. (laughs) The the usual, I'm not even going to bat an eye at the fact that we're just doing magic now. Yeah. 
Like, this is the only magic in the whole movie. This doesn't even, like, really ever happen after this either. Yeah, this would be, I guess, the one side tangent, but, like, while you're watching it, it still feels important, so... Mm -hmm. It's like, the main character is still learning how to use a weapon effectively to fight off his enemies, even though he seems to be doing a perfectly good job with his bamboo stick earlier. Uh-huh. Uh, either way, uh, after he's done, the master's like, hey, go find, find this guy known as Longbeard. Yeah. Turns out Longbeard is like Little John Part 2. Uh-huh. He's the one who has all the merry men with him. Yeah, he's built a literal army to fight off the evil I would evil call him a Friar Tuck, but I, I don't know. Uh, well, who knows? I think we're stretching the Robin Hood thing a little too yeah, far yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's his own story. He gets there and, uh, oh, I guess going on Robin Hood again, he's the... This little John has his own Robin Hood, who is a perfect marksman with his bow. Yes! So we found the other half of <laughs> these characters. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, yes, he's built up an army that is ready to take out the evil magistrates and establish a new world order, yada yada, you know the thing. Uh-huh. Um, and turns out they were just waiting for Hong Gildong to get there to become General Hong Gildong. Yes. So he shows up and he's immediately given control over this entire army. Mm -hmm. They go and they beat the crap out of the evil magistrate and kill him off this time. And uh, in the meantime, the evil magistrate and like the dude in charge of war for the c country, yeah. I think, has like captured Hong Gildong's family parents. parents and is like, he's like, your son is doing all these evil things, so we're going to capture you and lure him into a trap or something. Mm -hmm. And Hong Gildong's like, oh no, that's terrible. Well, I guess I better go face him alone. And uh, in the middle of the night on his way there, he's like, hey, can I stay in your house, old creepy lady? And she's like, sure. <laughs> and then she drops the house off a cliff. Yeah. Because she was working with the evil army. Right. Well, and, and there's even a scene where she's like, now pay me what you promised. And they're like... We're not paying you diddly shit until we kill Gong... Hong Gildong. Hong Gildong. And or we were never going to pay you anyways, old lady, because yeah. we're evil army people. Yeah. Uh, so they capture Hong Gildong, who somehow survived falling out... Uh, a house falling down a cliff. Mm -hmm. um, and he gets saved by two tigers. Oh, yeah, because we earlier... Forgot this. Because earlier he found he found a tiger that was roaring and crying. And he's like, oh, this tiger needs me. <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> and so he goes and he helps this mother tiger pull her cub out, out of, of a, a pit. pit. And so the mother tiger and the child tiger, who's now grown up, save Hong Gildong from the army and yep. take him back to the guy that was almost whipped to death and the love interest girl. And this is the part where the love interest girl rides off to the merry men and is like, "Hey, you need to. We need help." And they're like, "Let's do it!" Yeah. <laughs> Turns out, Hong Gildong going by himself was a stupid idea, and we should have gone with him in the first place, yep. which is what we said we should have done. Yeah. So they go off to save the day, mm -hmm. and then there's a big army fight, and it all is all going well until the minister of war or whoever he is takes. Hong Gildong's dad. And he's like, don't come any closer. I'll I'll kill him. And Hong Gildong flies out of the sky on his cloud and grabs the minister and takes him up into the sky. And then they're both standing on the cloud and having a sword fight and something. And then he slashes him once. He falls off the cloud and dies. Yeah. And he saves the day. Hooray! And on top of that, uh, his dad is like, I should have never disowned you. You are my son. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's all happy and stuff. And yeah. Good things happened all around. Uh-huh. It's sweet. Mm-hmm. And that's the movie. Yep, that's it. It's a pretty straightforward flick, all things considered. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed it well enough. Obviously, the animation is... Real rough. Not good. No, no. But like pretty much anything else about this movie is good, and I would, I would definitely recommend people to ch check it out. Check it out. Ooh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh huh. <laughs> so anyway, next up, 
uh, on our list is another South Korean film from the same year. Mm -hmm. But uh, this one, it's actually related to the last one. Because it's about Chattel Bowie. Bowie. And the movie's called Hoppy and Bowie? Yeah, Hoppy and Chattel Bowie or something. So yeah. it's about Chattel Bowie, who is the secondary character in this movie, and someone else. So we'll have to see how that goes. Yeah. See you guys then.